Let's take a look at electrostatic charge, and this should largely be a review lesson. So electrostatics, study of charges that are at rest, that aren't moving. So electrostatics is different from electricity, where the charges are allowed to move, and so when we're studying electricity, we're really studying the currents. What exactly is charge? Well, we know it's coming from the electrons and the protons. And the electrons have a negative charge, the protons have a positive charge. What we're generally referring to when we talk about charge is a deficit or a surplus of electrons compared to protons. So if we have two protons and two electrons, positive and negative cancel each other out and we have no charge. But if we've got three protons and two electrons, we're going to have a small positive charge. The unit for the charge, it's called the Coulomb, and we give it the letter C as a symbol. Now, what exactly is a Coulomb? Turns out a Coulomb is a very big charge. If we have a deficit of exactly one electron, that is, we have one more proton than electron, then we get a charge of only 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs. And that means that a full Coulomb would be one over that very small number, of excess electrons. That's going to be about a billion, billion excess electrons in order to make a Coulomb. So a Coulomb, in fact, is a large amount of charge. We have a fundamental rule of electrostatics, and that is that like charges will repel, whereas opposite charges attract. So if you've got two electrons they're going to push each other away. But if we've got a proton and an electron, they're going to attract each other. The idea of charge leads into a very important idea in electricity, and that is the difference between insulators and conductors. So in an insulator, charge has a hard time flowing. In a conductor, the charge flows very well. At least for our purposes, what that's going to mean is if we've got an insulator, the electrons are going to be attached to the positive nucleus. There's going to be a strong bond there, and your atom there is going to be balanced, an equal amount of positive and negative charge. And there won't be any charge available to flow. So in an insulator, the electrons are all attached to the atom. So you don't have an ion. Whereas in a conductor, in a conductor, some of these valence shell electrons will be loose. They won't be attached to any particular atom. And that means they're going to be free to flow around. So why is it that metals are the best conductors? Well, the metals have these free electrons that aren't attached to any particular atom. So there's this lattice here of these positive ions, which is composed of that positive nucleus and the electrons that are attached to the atom. And then the electrons that aren't attached to any particular atom, these blue ones that are floating around here, they're able to conduct charge. They're able to flow quite freely. And that's what makes a metal a great conductor. So it all comes down to, in a metal, there is a free sea of electrons that can conduct electricity. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.